if you press record, there's a thing where it asks me to give you permission to record as well. Do you want to do that? Okay. It's flickering. Uh, have you found it? Yeah, but it's flickering on and off. It's not staying on the screen. Yeah, because usually it has to ask me for permission for you to record as well. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not asking me permission. So just... No, because it's not working. All right, we'll just click it off again then. Okay, people, welcome to um, number two with Heather Brown, of awesome, brave character of a woman that I have the privilege to connect with. And we're still learning our way around Zoom, which is a fantastic uh, interviewing app and more secure than Skype. Um, so forgive our little technical stuff as we start. So I'm not sure where we're going to go with this. All I know is that we've got more to talk about. Um, the first interview, sort of unofficial connection that Heather and I had, we did with my Pamela recording on Skype. Oh, you've disappeared. It switched itself off. All right, try and turn it back on. Not doing it. Okay, it should be coming back. Yeah, yeah. there we are, we're back. Yeah, the first recording that Heather and I did, which is nonetheless hugely valuable, but my Pamela software for recording with Skype has been sabotaged and everything I say is scrambled and double speed. So, you know, it's just a bit disconcerting, but every, fortunately on that interview, everything Heather said was perfectly clear and just um, phenomenal testimony. This is Angela's Cash's The Word of Their Testimony. Um, it's uh, Sunday the 12th of March 2017 and I just want to recap briefly you can find the first interview on my YouTube channel um, and I'll upload it to my website angelascashes.com and I think Prue's gonna you're gonna set up a GoFundMe to help find your son is that right yeah have you started doing that no I haven't started doing it yet Okay, well, if anybody wants to designate a donation specifically to Heather to help find her son, just put that on the, you know, you can either do it by PayPal or, or my GoFundMe, but if you just put a note, this is for Heather, I'll make sure she gets it, so thanks for that. But um, I just want to recap in the first uh, connection or interview that Heather and I did, although... The lead-in was what's more topical, which is that Heather was interviewed for four hours or four times by Wiltshire Police in the investigation into former UK Prime Minister Edward Heath. And she had some in information which to those of us in this field was no surprise at all. Many, many survivors, I think 30 survivors came forward to Wiltshire Police but everybody knew that this prime minister was a child raping, sodomizing, murdering lunatic. Everybody knew that, you know, but it's good to see that the police are acknowledging that, you know, you can refer to the articles in the Daily Mail and you can look forward to the inquiry report in June. And the chief constable of Wiltshire police has already come out and said that he has no doubt that the allegations of, of rape uh, and so on were, were accurate. I'm slightly concerned that they will try and cover up the actual you know, our ring aspect of Edward Heath and the blackmail aspect as in Pizzagate and the murder, you know, the fact that because he was recognizable and he was rising in the political ranks in the UK, um, young boys were tossed overboard of his morning cloud yachts after being raped, tortured, brutalised. So let's hope all of that comes out in the inquiry and that it's not um, a sanitised version. The more heart-rending part of Heather's testimony, because a lot... Can you mute while, just while I'm talking so there's no interference? You'll see on the bottom left hand there's an option to mute. You got it? Yeah, the interference has stopped, that's great. And then as soon as you want to talk, just unmute that button. 
So um, the heart-rending, more topical part of Heather's disclosure, because Edward Heath is dead, Jimmy Savile is dead, Cyril Smith is dead, Leon Britton is apparently dead, uh, Greville Janet is apparently dead. So it's very easy for them to disclose in a controlled fashion intel about the dead politicians and try and frame them as isolated incidences but what's more i mean it's horrific and there are many many survivors of savile of jenna of heath of cyril smith of leon Britton, and so on many survivors who have testified to the police and been ignored but my heart goes out to them actually. There's one, Stephen George, who's being prosecuted herself and harassed, as is her uh, partner. They're both being dragged through the courts to stop them whistleblowing. They are victims. Stephen George is a recognized victim of a Conservative Party pedophile ring in her childhood, and then of Jimmy Savile in Broadmoor and other places like that. And yet she and her partner, or he, are being dragged through the courts, uh, framed, harassed, stitched up. They're the victims of Savile and Pinkerton and so on, documented, admitted, acknowledged, and yet they're being prosecuted. And this is, we've got to do something to stem this tide of whistleblowers being maliciously sectioned or maliciously prosecuted or targeted. We have to do something about this, people. But the, I just want to synopsize briefly that the most devastating part of the part one interview was that Heather had a very gifted child, Binium, taken from her, stolen from her when he was six, on frivolous grounds of, uh, he had some black blood in him, even though he was white, but there was mixed race in his father, estranged father. So one of the frivolous grounds was, oh, he's black, he needs to grow up with a black family, he needs to go to a black social worker immediately. Another frivolous ground was, oh, you're not allowed to homeschool. You know, even though he, Heather was homeschooling because Kensington and Chelsea had no school places and she was homeschooling to an incredible level, an advanced level. But those that were the uh, malicious grounds, another malicious ground, Heather had a football flag hanging out. Um, this was during the Irish Troubles. She had a, a Gaelic football flag hanging out the window for a match, and they were described as terrorists. So, so, and bad enough that her son was taken at the age of six, and Lambeth Council had him, and he started reporting, Mummy, they're taking me to Camden at midnight, and he started showing real signs of distress, but, as he was due to age out, start the aging out process at 16, they disappeared him. So basically, Heather has been looking for Binium. He's now 25, so nine years. And she has evidence indicating that Bexley Heath County Council know of his whereabouts. It's a bit like the Johnny Gosh story. It's like the UK version of Johnny Gosh, as far as I can tell. And evidence indicates that Bexley Heath County Council know where he is and they refuse to give that information to Heather. The other thing I want to recap which is huge which shows the generational social engineering and manipulation that's been going on in this field is that Heather was stolen from her mother who she saw die in front of her eyes in a ditch. She wasn't told this was her mother she was adopted by abusers. She was forced to raise their children from the age of eight or nine, looking after them for days at a time, and you know, and then abused herself and then dragged around Ireland and then tried to be sent into Belfast as a spy, you know, to gather intelligence and so on and so forth. So this is the second generation at least that they've done this to. There's also uh, authorities in possession of the full identity of her birth mother, and they won't release that either. Heather is fully entitled to the death certificates of her adoptive monstrous parents, 
and she's fully entitled. There's some track with the birth certificate and so on where she could find out that the name of her murdered mother, that she was caused to watch die in a ditch. And uh, it's only been through Heather's tenacity and determination to survive in order to find her son that she's managed to join this many dots. So that's just a recap. I think, well, I didn't encourage, but well, Heather said, you know, could I set up a GoFundMe? She was alarmed that I had one, but I don't feel any embarrassment whatsoever in asking people to help me continue to do this kind of very dangerous work. And so Heather, I hope, is gonna set up a GoFundMe for help, just to get legal support, to get transport, to get, you know, whatever it takes to not let this go. They cannot just steal a gifted child, a loved, homeschooled, beautiful, gifted child at six and lose him. It's not okay. So now you can unmute Heather and I'll let you talk. Have I summarized that properly? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, there's a bit of a buzz in the background, but it's okay. Yeah, there is. I can hear it. My processor is going crazy for some reason. Have you turned everything else off? Have you switched off? Yeah, all... I have, I've shut everything else. Well, that's better. It's, it's all right, so will you just talk and tell me? We can either discuss more about your son or we can go into the Anglo-Irish thing today. It's up to you. Okay, well, we'll discuss about my son this time because Bexley Council came and took him when he was nine. When we lived in Kensington and Chelsea, this woman called Claire Hawkyard, she was a fake health visitor. By fake, I mean she had been sacked in 1990 as a health visitor. They had removed her because she'd been found in bed with one of the client's husbands one lunchtime. <laughs> I want to write these names down. As you say them, I want to write them down. So let me just get a pen. Now, I don't necessarily want to go over what we've already covered. I want to go over some clarification and some new stuff today. Yeah. Because there's a lot of information in the first video and people can refer to that. But just tell me that health visitor that was fired for being Claire, in with a client. Claire, Claire Hulkyard. She now works with the elderly. I know where she is. Because actually, when I told about her, when I complained, she said she, she, she'd been She's been removed as a health visitor. Right. And when my son was three months old, she came to my house. She was on the management committee of the flat I lived in, and she came to the property one lunchtime, and she wanted me to give her my son's jewellery because I had jewellery on my son. So she wanted his jewellery, my jewellery, and some money. Just I, wait, I want to hold you one second there, just to bring it. Where is she working at the moment? She's working with the elderly in some place in Hounslow. She's right. on the it's on the internet. Okay, Claire, and you spell it Hawkyard, H A W K. No, a, no, H A L K. Oh, okay. Hawkyard. H A L K Y A R D. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Emma Claire Hawkyard. She's called. Anna Claire Hawkyard. All right, Emma. so she was fired as a health visitor for inappropriate... Well, they didn't, they didn't sack her. No, they should have sacked her for what she they was doing. They just transferred her, okay. But they, they not transferred her, they moved her into a closed office where she didn't have contact with the public. Okay, so they put her on <laughs> desk duty. They yeah. Put her on desk duty. They put her as a support worker for the health visitors, so she was only to have contact with the other health visitors, not with the public. Okay. Not only did she come to my house, she went, she was repeatedly going to all the other flats in the house and talking about me because the girls that lived in these flats said to me, why does she keep coming here? Why and she asked she for jewellery and what else? She didn't, not she asked, she told me if I didn't give her this jewellery and money, my jewellery, my son's jewellery and money she wanted, and if I didn't give her this, she would put social services on my back so I would never get them off. This is what she said. Well, I threw her out. Wow. And I threw her out and I called, um, I called the head office of Riverside Health Authority in Putney. And I spoke with the chief executive, Pearl Brown, and they told me to come along and see them. So I put my child straight into the buggy and I went along to Putney. Within half an hour of her leaving my property, I was on my way to her head office. 
Well done. So the head office said to me, well, she, they said, could I put in writing my complaint? Well, I did. And they wrote back to me telling me she's not a health visitor. Don't let her have access to your son. Don't allow her into your house and don't have anything to do with her. Wow. So she filled in a referral form to social services, which she wasn't allowed to do because she wasn't a health visitor. And she made a load of allegations in writing on the official form. She made these allegations to Chelsea Social Services. Well, they didn't call a case conference. They came and met with me and saw my son and saw my house and saw there was no, that they had no concerns and they closed the case. So um, she appeared again when it was nearly time for my son to go to school, when it was nearly, he was nearly of the age to go to school. She came knocking on my door. Okay, um, so just let me interrupt. So the first referral she made, they didn't take your son from you, they just came and investigated? They, they didn't even call a case conference. Okay. They just came along and met with us. And, and, you, and you filled them in? Yeah, well, they, they, they saw there was no concerns. And the, um, the services manager, Malcolm McKenzie, he met with me because she kept making complaints. She and other people kept making complaints. And Malcolm McKenzie met with us for three hours. Now, he was the services manager in Kensington and Chelsea. Right. And he said he found nothing wrong with us. And he closed the file and he took the file away from the Chelsea office and put it in his own office. And his office was where? Kensington Town Hall. Right, right, right. So he, basically, he went and he took the file and he locked it away in his own office. He said he'd had enough of this. But Ms. Hawkyard appeared on my doorstep when my son was supposed to be, you know, when it was the, he was coming up the age to go to school. She pushed her way into my house. She told me that she was going to remove him from the schools. Where are you going to send him? Because I'm going to go and take him. I ended up grabbing her by the arse of the trousers and the back of the neck and running her, literally running her up my hallway and throwing her out the door. And flinging her down the stairs. Baby clinic was opposite our house. Yeah, just a minute. I want to be careful with that. Did you, did you hurt her when you flung her down the stairs? Did you hurt her? Unfortunately, I didn't. How very unfortunate. Okay, it's just good to me, because I understand the rage of a mother whose child is being attempted to be stolen. There's nothing like the mother tiger, but I don't want you to unnecessarily incriminate yourself by coming across like you're this lunatic. No, you were just a mother tiger protecting her. No, she's a lunatic. She yeah, ended up having her SRN status removed from her because she was making malicious complaints about many, many mothers she wasn't a health visitor. She'd no authority to make these complaints. Okay. She would also stand across the road from the entrance to our block, which it was like sort of 20 feet away from the door. And she would wait for me to come out and she would run into Violet Melcher Clinic, which was the baby clinic. And she would run in there screaming that I was coming after her. Well, I wasn't coming after her. I was coming out of my own house to go to Waitrose. The woman was tapped in the head. I mean, she really, she, she ended up being sectioned. She had her SRN status taken off her when she made hundreds, not just one or two, but hundreds of complaints to social services. Malcolm McKenzie thought, well, what is she up to? Why is she doing this? There were reams of complaints about her behavior, as well as the fact that she hadn't been a health visitor since 1990, and we're now at 1996. So she'd been running around for six years. She'd gone into other people's houses and tried to steal children. And um, Malcolm McKenzie complained to the nursing and midwifery, uh, the, the registrational body for nurses and midwives. He complained about her. So they held a meeting about her and her SRN status was removed, which meant she couldn't be a midwife. She couldn't be a health visitor. She, they also made additional notes she was no longer allowed to work with children. So the only, yeah, well, it took the social services themselves to complain about her for that to be done. Wow. Yes, so she wasn't allowed to work with children. So what she did behind the back, she went, she, she was working in the Charing Cross Hospital as, um, 
an SEN, but she was only allowed to work while supervised and with adults. She was only allowed to work with adults while supervised by somebody higher than herself. Wow. She went to the police in school. And I got a phone call one morning when I was living in the other house I lived in in Betsy, not this one. I got a phone call from Fulham Police Station um, saying that I had been saying nasty things about Claire Hawkyard because I found out that she was running a private um, health visitor company. I looked in company's house and she was forbidden to be a health visitor, she was forbidden to work with children. She'd had her SRN status removed. She's so only she allowed set to up an agency. What, she what? set up a health visitor agency where she was the director. So wow. I complained about this, and because I complained, and I called up the management of Charing Cross Hospital, and I said, what, what the hell is she doing? She's not allowed to work with children. The nursing and midwifery board told me that they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, allow her to be anywhere near people's children. That was their very words to me. She's not allowed near other people's children. So um, when she found out that I had spoken to the management of the hospital, to her superiors, and again to the, 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 nursing and the Council for Nursing and Midwives, the registration of body, um, she went to the police. So she went to Fulham Police and she told the police that I was stalking her around Charing Cross Hospital. That I was getting into the private areas and I was physically following her. Well, the, the fact is that it's uh, got loads of um, security cameras inside the hospital. And you weren't there. I wasn't on any of these security cameras. So she was lying. Yeah. But the person she went to in the police was a friend of one of her managers. And what was his name? I don't know. Okay. Um, the person she went, they went to in the police was their friend because when I complained, um, I phoned up and I complained about having had this phone call. Copper phones me up and says, can you come to the station? I said, why? Have you found my son? He said, what? He said, no, I'm calling you because you've been stalking Miss Hulk Yard and you've been stalking her around the hospital. I said, have I? Yes, he said. I said, no, I'm on the CCTV. Oh, uh, um, he said, and he didn't know what to say. I said, um, he, he said, can you come to the station? I said, do you mean to Bexley Heath Police Station? He said, no, just Fulham, because you, you live in Chelsea. Well, I hadn't lived in Chelsea for years at that time. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, so she was able to get the police to threaten me when I kicked up a fuss about her running this, this uh, company that she wasn't allowed to be running because she wasn't allowed near children. Wow. Well, her... This rubbish that she wrote about me, she wrote that she believed I was mentally ill and she believed this and she believed that. All because I wouldn't give her jewellery and money. And... Um, I, I need to just... Uh, this Zoom I've got, I have to just stop recording and restart. So give me 30 seconds and we'll go okay. on to part two. That's very helpful. Just give me a second. <laughs> 